Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Again, I am delighted to join you uh, this evening. This is your pastor, Mr. Porcy Smith. Uh, as we continue uh, with our teachings for the week and our daily devotions that we started back in January, uh, talking about, again, a living church for a dying world, and in particular, a healthy church. We've covered topics such as being healthy physically, being healthy emotionally, being healthy spiritually, being healthy relationally, tremendous presentations. All these are on our website. And I encourage you, if you missed any of them, to go back and review them, both the written material uh, and the video material as well. They will all enhance and bless your life as a child of God and encourage you to be more effective uh, in God's kingdom. For the past month, we've been dealing with uh, just a tremendously important subject, uh, our financial health, wellness, uh, and wholeness. Uh, we've been spending time in the word of God, looking at what is the Lord saying to us, his people on the earth, about our finances. And for the first month of this teaching, we really dealt with, again, how God wants us to give and what God wants us to give. Again, we've talked about, uh, as we went through those series, uh, there are only three ways to please the Lord uh, with our finances, only three. Again, number one, is the whole issue of giving, the whole gamut of giving, uh, tithing, offerings, giving generously, giving bountifully, giving with a heart of joy and thanksgiving, giving knowing that God has given us a promise uh, with every commitment of giving. So our giving is critically important, giving to the household of faith, making sure there's meat in God's house, uh, giving toward missions, giving toward all the endeavors, all, again, of the vision and goals that God has given the body of Christ. So our giving, again, uh, critically important in this regard. But again, we want to shift this week, and we began uh, with our teaching earlier this week, not only of giving, but the area of spending. Wow, you and I know that in most of our churches, ours included, there is very little time spent teaching about the biblical teachings on spending, biblical principles that the Lord Christ and others in the word of God has given us in regards to our finances. And even though we've given, again, generously, we've given bountifully, we've given liberally, we've done our tithing, our offerings, that's great. But again, as good stewards, we are allowed to utilize other possessions, finances that God puts us in possession of. But remember, we never own anything. We are, in fact, God's trusted stewards in the earth. And as we grow in the Lord, grow in the spirit, we'll become more mature even in that area of spending. And so tonight, I want to continue you on, you and I, uh, in this journey. And I encourage you to encourage your family and friends and others to join you in these teachings. So, so again, earlier this week, uh, we dealt with, again, uh, our giving from the perspective of discipline, even in personal giving. We talked about why we give, I mean, why we spend. Do we spend to be seen? Are we trying to impress others? Are we trying to keep up with the Joneses? That is not the way God wants us to utilize our spending, even though he wants us to enjoy the spending that we have after we have first given uh, appropriately. Shouldn't feel guilty about spending. But again, talking about how we should give. And again, here's what I want you to look at tonight. Two major aspects of personal spending. Number one, the difference between wants and needs. Wow. Let's spend a few minutes and talk about that. And then to connect that, let's talk about what we all are aware of in this recent age, the curse of debt. So number one, we are allowed to spend as we have given, that we have done what we're supposed to do in a household of faith. We have personal needs and God wants us to spend our resources wisely, even in that. But we're not given to impress. We're given again in, in the category of wants and needs. Now, wait a minute. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you should not spend your money on wants. It doesn't mean you should only spend your money on needs. But you have to, first of all, have the courage and the maturity and the discipline to differentiate between wants 
and needs. We gave you some scriptures, two of them uh, from the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 21 and verse 17, where he says, uh, if you love riches or if you love luxuries, you will never again have enough. If, if you love luxurious, extravagant spending, he says you will never be rich, but you will probably be poor. Because again, once you begin on that pathway of reckless spending, it's hard to control it. So again, Proverbs 21 and 17, look at either the paraphrased Living Bible or uh, again, the TEV, the English version. It gives us insight that the person who loves luxuries, loves the pleasure of buying expensively so that people can feel good about them, not the right choice, even in dealing with wants and needs. And then in the 30th chapter of Proverbs, in verse number eight, it tells us again that the wise person asked the Lord, help me to have the courage just to be able to spend and receive what I need for my daily living. Does it mean you won't spend for some wants as well? But your life is categorized by, again, a willful, deliberate, wise spending that brings back a dividend. Again, wants and needs. It's really important to understand that because again, if you don't practice that, you will think that your life consists of what you eat, how expensive is the meal, uh, what you wear, you know, how expensive, how expensive are the clothes that you have, uh, what you drive. Because again, if you have to have something because others have it, you, you are hoping others and even your own self think better of you because of what you spend on things. Jesus says in chapter six, again in Matthew, verse 25, that a person's life does not consist of the things that they possess, not consist of what you eat or what you wear or what you spend. So again, trying to put some framework in the whole issue of wants and needs. Make a list, make a list of things that you really need and make sure that you focus first in your spending on those things. And then there's not, nothing wrong with uh, acquiring some wants. As long as those wants are not based on trying to make yourself feel better. Remember, yourself has nothing to do with your money or your ability to buy expensive things. People who are rich, who can buy extravagantly, does not make them better. In fact, in God's eyesight, he says, be careful. They may corrupt your living. So again, wants and needs. But again, the second part of this week, we really looked at not only wants and needs, but the curse of debt. Yes, debt. Doesn't mean you shouldn't owe anything. I know Romans uh, says to owe no man anything, but that's not an absolute. It means don't be, don't be such a, a, a creature of debt that you use in debt to live. So debt can be a fooler because you're borrowing things, you're putting things on layaway or whatever. You, you are utilizing your money in a way you're spending what you don't have. And it can be very intoxicating. That's why it's so easy to get credit cards. That's why in our culture, so many people are going through different issues because they have learned the culture of debt. Uh, our government is, is a prime example that you know, when it gets into trouble and it's spent more than it has, what does the government do? Print some more money. It can always print more money, but at some time, those loans are gonna become due. You don't want your life to be choked out, strangled. Your life minimized because you're, you're spending all your energy, all of your creativity, all your opportunities to make enough money to hopefully retire your debt so again, having a good handle on debt is critically important. You don't want to get into the habit of owing both Peter and Paul, and then you rob Peter to pay Paul. But you still got to pay Peter. And oftentimes, the longer you have that debt, the more you owe. Even to our ministers and leaders and pastors of churches, even as you walk through your stewardship of your church, be careful that you don't practice mature decisions about spending money <clears throat> and creating debt even in the church. The, debt, the church doesn't have to be debt-free, but it shouldn't be so latent in debt 
that it chokes out its ability to carry out its mission of saving souls, of rescuing the perishing, feeding the hungry, again, clothing the naked, visiting those who are in prison, all the things that we want to do, the mission outreach, is going to be hindered uh, if we are just laden with chronic debt. So I encourage you, again, utilize uh, our ministry resources. Again, Kingdom Stewardship Ministries at our church, excellent avenue to learn how to create a budget, how to learn to look at what you have and what you owe and how to balance those. Even for next week, we'll deal with this, how to invest your funds properly so that the return will be leveraged. Again, God will bless you to do that. Even this week, as you study today from Deuteronomy chapter 28, look at what God says. Now in Deuteronomy 28, the Lord speaks to Israel as a nation, not simply to individuals, but to Israel as a nation, as he speaks to the church as a community. He tells them that first verse, you know, verse 12 is really important. First verse says to them, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord, the Lord will elevate you above all other nations. God will prosper you above all nations. In other words, don't adopt the culture of the nations that don't know God, but adopt the culture of the word of God that showed us prudence and wisdom in how we utilize our funds. We don't have to have everything immediately, but we're able again to budget by faith, to use what we have by faith. And by doing that, we're able to secure not only ourselves, but as you'll learn next week, our future, other generations. Not only that, we'll be able to leverage what God has given us after we've given and, and shared uh, and bless others that God says he will, he will give us so much, we'll be able to become, and that's my last teaching uh, on this week, philanth philanthropists. They're able to not only bless others, they're able even to endow institutions that are positive, uh, endow charities, endow uh, higher learning institutions to be able for generations to be able to be blessed at a low cost. Why can't God do that for us? So again, brothers and sisters, I am delighted to share these teachings with you. I hope that you will just take them to heart, that you will utilize them, read them over and over, pray about it, seek the Lord, and share them with others. Again, this week is the week that uh, precedes Faith Works in our Family and Friends Day, October 8th, 9th, and 10th. I want you to be a part of that. Again, go on, on site and register for Faith Works Friday, then the Friday after service, for our young people, $15 for our youth to register, $25 for a regular adult. And again, that's for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Sunday the 10th of October, culminate in a fantastic 106th church anniversary celebration. God will bless us for Family and Friends Day on Sunday the 10th. I want you to be in the house. I want you to be there. If you've been vaccinated especially, come and be a part of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in person. But if you can't, or if you're not real yet um, safe enough, then again, online, you can do that. But to all of you, uh, I love you in Jesus' name. I know these teachings will revolutionize your life if you embrace them by faith. God will bless you. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he is he that will come to God, must believe that he is. And look at this, every time, he is a rewarder. God is a rewarder of anyone who will seek him with diligence. Be that diligent seeker, be that trusted steward, be that faithful disciple, and God will bless you and use you to be a blessing. I'm signing off. This is your pastor, Bishop Horsey Smith. I love you. So Smith sends her love as well in Jesus' name.